shall survive town meeting. We call the meeting to order. Um, any public comment on the items not on the agenda? No, any public comment. How's that happen? Um, additional changes to the agenda. I would like to add one thing um, about the Central Vermont ISP alternate position. So we get done with um, some of the other stuff. Maybe we could talk about that briefly. Okay. Um, Cliff, I need, I need to give you the open office. <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully execute the office of select board for the state of Vermont and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of your judgment and ability according to law? And you do. Okay. I swear. You swear? Don't put it on camera. Don't swear on camera. All right. First order of business is our normal stuff after town meeting. We've done oath of office. Rose already did hers. And what's going around is Cliff's wife did a beautiful fruit basket for the office staff. And Cliff had a card. Make sure we really so this, appreciate that for Melissa. This is yeah. for Cliff's wife. No, no this for is the for office the staff. office to the go Cliff's with wife. the fruit basket that oh. the select board is giving the office staff for um. their efforts. Next That's meeting, we'll do a thank you note to Elizabeth for making the group pass. Open it in minutes. <laughs> okay, um, we've done the oath of office. Um, Robert's rules of order for small boards is. I think there. we should do the full blown. A full blown? Yeah, then, then you're not. I, 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 um, this is my opinion. I, I like the procedure, I like the, the motion and the second. And you have a, a whole regimen uh, mm -hmm. along with the discussion that follows. Um, I just think that when you start heading down that small board path, it gets things get sloppier. Mm -hmm. And I've witnessed that with other boards recently, not to name them. But so you would like to make a motion to that adopt we, the that we adopt the regular Roberts Rules of Order, and you know, I just think it makes things. Less contentious when we're on a contentious issue. If we have a process and procedure that's really clear, okay. That's what I would suggest. All right. Yeah. Nothing else. Not great. Were you seconding that motion? Oh, it's way good. Oh, okay. But I can second it at the same time. Okay. Hey, I'll be I second. <laughs> <laughs> Multitask. Anybody else have any thoughts on the tools? The only thing I would like to say is that I think that we functioned, or have functioned well under the condensed version or the version for small boards. And um, I think I remember hearing Gus say at town meeting day that the regular Robert's Rules of Order is like 700 pages. And so is that the regular or that's not the one that's, that's not condensed? The that's the or? regular. This is Robert's Rules. It is 643 pages. Yeah. We have not been following small board We have not. Rules. Small um, board rules is I make a motion, we vote on it. Well, no. There's, well, no, there's we, no second required. What we have been following, I pulled it up from a year ago. Okay. This is what we adopted. Yeah, a that's year what ago. we did a year ago. The callous rules of procedure that are not Robert's rules for small boards. They are, they came, they were adapted from the right. LCT, and they actually do require a second. Item five under organization mm -hmm. motions made by members of the body require a second. And we've always done that, right? We always, we well, always, we've done that. we always, yeah. always well, small, that. Small, right. That's why I was yeah. distinguishing the small board rules do not involve a second. And I think that the oh. process may sound crazy, See? but yeah, we weren't small, following small board rules. And mm -hmm. I don't want to head down that path. The, yeah, no. What I, we've I, been doing, it, 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 have we been just been following is, that? Yeah, well, we, sure, we, pretty, much. pretty, we could, we could, all, we could perhaps all read it and do better. Um, even on this, which makes this a tall order to say that this is what we do yeah. all the time. Um, there, yeah, I mean, we are relatively informal. Relatively, yeah. I mean, I think I like the idea of a motion in a second. And we do always and we do, do that. And we always do that. Um, yeah. 
We're, we don't we don't stick to our rules about uh, even these rules, much less these. Um, members of the public are supposed to be called on by the chair to speak. When we have members of the public here, they well, yeah, we try to do that, but we try to well, also make it more. Right. Well, we we do. I mean, I, we always say at the beginning of a meeting that when there's a lot of the public here, that you know, please wait for them yeah. for, right. to be called on. But at the same time, you don't want it to be so formal that people don't feel comfortable and, and welcomed and respected for their opinion. It's one thing to have standards in place and then we kind of just generally wave and formally maybe you know, wave in a particular standard when, it, when it, it's a kind of a productive conversation, but when things get contentious, that's when, we that's when the rules right. really count. And right. mm -hmm. again, leaving names out of it, there a number of years ago, there, there were one or two individuals up to attend our select board meetings on a regular basis, and I used to call them, I don't think I called them out, but I you know, might have even in a uh, joking fashion made note of their being at, behaving like a sixth select board member right. and taking too many liberties. You know, right. the inch, giving the inch and the, right. the yeah. mile, right. and that's what can happen. Mm -hmm. And you had to rein that in, and it was contentious. But we did it. But it was contentious, and it was difficult for you to pull that back in, because mm -hmm. you were now taking away mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and it, it was it had become kind of a, a right mm -hmm. of sorts to yeah. people who had attended on a regular basis. And, and, and in some respects, I, I feel like they they assumed they had a greater set of rights. You know, not, not formally acknowledging it, but they, they, they took on a greater set of um, rights than the rest of the people that might attend. Mm -hmm. They would just chime in, and other people would raise their hand. He'd say, well, you got to raise your hand, but these, mm -hmm. these individuals would just yeah. chime in. So mm -hmm. I don't want that to happen. I don't want you to have to argue with people about um, rules of procedure. So that's why I like mm -hmm. having these. We can lighten up if need be, but when things get difficult, we need right. to And I think sometimes it depends on the situation. You have to kind of read the read the, the situation. The so, well, the hard part about that is, to, to John's point, then you're stuck trying to rein things in when we've set a tone that's a little different, mm -hmm. um, and then people feel embarrassed and surprised yeah. that now the rules are different. Like, how mm -hmm. come now they're different? Mm -hmm. um, and it might be better to just in, in more neutral, less judgmental. If we, you know, one thing we could do that we haven't done formally is sometimes we invite people to sit at the table, and maybe maybe if the person you know we invite Toby and Alfred to join us at the table, that's the conversation, mm -hmm. which is yeah. a different line than somebody sitting not at the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not in the rules anywhere, but it could be it could be a protocol we have. And then the burden is you on you, Denise. Mm -hmm. Even when things are going easy, to keep that line for the sake of the times when it isn't. Right. So the job is easier when it isn't. <coughs> so I th so we could going forward at important. the beginning of every meeting when there's public here other than mm -hmm. like Alfred and Toby, remind folks that they need to. And I think I usually try to do that, like especially when we had the Memorial Hall meeting at the. Town yeah. hall. I was thinking mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. yeah, you know that. Well, that was a, that was obviously a big deal, and people expected order. I think right. it's all, actually a little more challenging here, when there's you know not a handful of people. Yeah, not yeah. A, not three dozen, but but four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and they come in late, and they don't hear the beginning, and um, yeah. Okay, so there's a motion on the table. That was Are you Robert modifying Tavis. your motion? Well, I, I think I think this fits within the standard Roberts Rules of Order. Um, no, it's different. It's this different. Not, this this not, was something that that's this, super abridged. You're saying this is uber abridged. You're yeah. welcome to. It's what we. But in terms of how, I mean, this is a lot more than just how we run our meeting. This speaks to what the chair's role is, and mm -hmm. I'd like to speak to that. And this is not pertaining to these particularly, but you know, the, my understanding is, and our collective understanding is, the chair's role and responsibility are very prescribed, um, i.e. the chair sets the agenda and the chair runs the meetings um, and maintains decorum. And uh, a chair's role can be expanded, but only with a vote of this, the full you know, quorum present. Absolutely. And, and I know Denise understands it and, and abides by that, but I just think that's important just always to bring that up. 
because someday down the road, Denise might say, I'm out of here, and we have another chair, and they misunderstand our history and, and how we, we see the chair's role. The chair, a chair cannot negotiate on our collective behalf and make decisions and sign contracts and all that stuff without being prior authorized. And we've done that. We've authorized the chair to sign our behalves. Um, mm -hmm. and, but that needs prior authorization. And that is so important because in so many places I see chairs doing, never here, uh, doing, taking on authorities that have never been conveyed. Um, so. It's in there. It's in there. It's, yeah. it's not underscored. So, so this comes from the LCT, mm -hmm. which means we can we can modify it. So, um, yeah. So maybe what we do, I don't know what if the world comes to an end if we don't approve anything tonight. I don't think it comes to an end. And we take a look at this, and we could we could say, you know, nobody, not even the chair, if we can make those little changes mm -hmm. to tighten this up, mm -hmm. so that we actually have something that is digestible by everybody and is, as an alternative to 700 pages that right, yeah, very that's fine. few people are going to Do you want to put internalize. It, I'm fine with putting it on the next agenda. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. It gives yeah. us time. To, it's a good discussion. We don't usually think about it. Thinking about something as important as right. over the course of two meetings. And I think it would be also important, I, I haven't looked at that in a while, to make just, you know, is there something in there about how we respond to and treat each other on the board, you know, with respect and, you know, the decorum of the interactions between board members? Is that in there mm -hmm. too? Could be, could be more. Mm -hmm. So I think we should look at that piece too. Mm -hmm. Cliff, it's in um, the meeting, right? At, did you find it? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, okay, so let's. It's on the website. You can go to the policies and procedures and find it listed there as well. Can you move it into the next meeting's folder so we can look at it and edit it? To the Google? You get good. I get that cat. I know. You <laughs> can <laughs> All right, so let's put that off. I'll make a note. Okay, the next um, is the organization of the select board for chair and vice chair. I'll make a motion to nominate Denise Wheeler for chair. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I guess I can vote for myself, right? Yep. Doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> <laughs> is there a nomination for vice chair? I nominate John Bray Bam. I'll second for vice that. chair. Okay. Any discussion on that? I'd like to hear a few words from the nominee. <laughs> we'll get us started. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All those Underscore in, few, huh? <laughs> all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, and every year we have to set our meeting schedule, time, location, all that stuff. So we use, we've been meeting on the second and fourth Monday, except during budget time when we met every Monday. Um, and the time has been 7 o'clock. And the meetings have been here because the town hall isn't available. So I don't, we can always update the location if we get to the point where the town hall is usable. But for right now, I would suggest we stick with the town office. Mm -hmm. Everybody, in a, I don't know if we need to make an emotion on that or not. I don't think so. It's really just setting the schedule. Um, physical locations for posting meeting notices and announcements and that type of thing. Um, and, and this is important because we need to pass this information on to the other committees, boards, subcommittees, whoever, in town. We have typically made our posting locations front porch forum, the town office bulletin board, East Callis store, and Maple Corner store. So would we like to readopt those same posting locations? Yeah. East Cal's Maple Corner, town offices in front which one? Yeah. Um, so I would make a motion that we continue that practice for posting locations. Um, is there a second? Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Newspaper of record for public notices. And I think um, when the town office staff posts stuff in the paper, I think they've been using the Hardwood Gazette. But if we could put that off until after we have our staff meeting on Thursday, just to make sure where they're posting, if there's any special requirement that they're running into when they post notices, because Hardwood Gazette is only once a week. Right. Times Argus is daily. This is such an outdated um, process. Thing. Well, just that it has to be in a newspaper. Yeah, I know. That's but. really outdated. But, um, but they also post notices on the website too, so I want to just make sure, I think we, maybe we have. That's, they do that? Yeah. yeah. What, and what kinds of stuff is this? Like um, DRB hearings? DR, yeah, DRB hearings have to and, be published in the paper. And doesn't the warning? The town meeting warning, warning gets published in the paper. Hold on. Oh, look out, guys. Behind you. How much? Uh, <coughs> I'm afraid it's going to blow that window. They did it over there. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. I'm going to do that this thing again. There's no daylight at all. <laughs> When you do the IT services RFP, that's something that they'll have to advertise. Okay. Yeah, any, any, right. any bids that the town highway department has, yeah. has to be in the paper. Which one do you use? Uh, but I think we use both, hardware and hardware. Yeah, see, I don't know if we do both or we just pick one depending on the timing. So I'd like to get more information from the office staff about this before we, you know, do our normal routine if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and this last item, it's really what we've been doing right along where I come in and I review the orders and sign them and then they go to all of you to approve at the next meeting. So that's what this is. And I did post in the, or I asked Katie to post in the folder that statute that, re that talks about that. So would somebody like to make a motion to authorize the chair to do that? So move. Second. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So the two things we're putting off then is the Roberts Rules of Order. Mm -hmm. Or and some, some rules. Some rules. Some, and then the um, newspaper of record. Can I, uh, so are we, are we changing our, we're not changing our signing orders. So we, so we are, we are uh, turbo compliant because we all sign. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's not actually required. Right. Okay. Right. But I like the idea Just that. Requirements. Hmm? No, I have them. I read them. No. Yeah. Um, this is like double. This is double. Right, right. But so. but I appreciate knowing that actually we could have one person do it because especially when things are tight, we do rely on your review ahead of time mm -hmm. um, when we all sign. Right. So this so for instance, if there was something that came up and a check really needed to get out yeah. right away, I could authorize it and then mm -hmm. it would be put in the orders for you all to review After at the, the next time. meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's basically what we've been doing. <coughs> We're in a hurry to get something out. Mm -hmm. That happens quite often, actually. Like the, the cell phone company, they they give you ten days by the time they bill you, the time they want their check, and that's right. And then they try to do late it's fees. Almost, it's, it's almost impossible for you guys to approve them that fast. Right. So the cell, more more with the cell phone. There's there. been a few um, invoices having to do with the town hall. Mm -hmm. That when the contractor submits them, and by the time we can get to them. <coughs> You right. still put our home center in there two uh, days also. I yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they charge us interest. The cell yes, phone, he, you're right, Alfie, actually. I had a conversation literally with my cell phone company today because I'm, I finally recognize that I there is literally not time. If I wait for the paper bill to arrive, then my payment is late, period. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they it's like... I know. Well, it's like I, you know, I'm not. Well, they want everybody to be on so automatic. So I call them up and say, "You gotta take that charge off." I didn't get. Do they do it yet? Yeah, they do. 
They yeah. want they want people they, to be on automated payment. They do. They're I totally have. pushing you that. And they I said it's do automated they payment me payment either. Thing. That's right. I like to look at the check and right and, and be in control of, what, of whether I want to pay you. But they, they said to me that they were happy to waive the fee because they realized that some people are not very technically savvy. Oh, good. Oh, 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 that's not oh, that's my savvy. Cell phone. That's technically savvy. Right. Did you hear me say I'm not technically yeah. savvy? No, that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put those words in my mouth. Anyway, sorry for the detour. All right. Um, I think that's it, unless anybody has something else for the organizational piece. All right, um, Toby and Alfred, who wants to go first? Alfie wants to go, I don't have mine. Did you get the truck registered? I did, I did. I couldn't believe that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's first thing, I, first time I've ever had that. Yeah, I mean, how many trucks have we registered over the years and yeah. they never asked for anything? Right. I've always just walked in and right. gave them the paperwork and walked out. Of and you could have called anybody and they could have sent an email. Yeah, well, if I couldn't have gotten a hold of you, I would have had them go to our website, Cal's website, and right. I could have proved who I was, and that would I should have done it. But well, it's all right. I got a hold of you, and that was that was fine. Yeah. And so what happened? So I don't know. It was like three o'clock Friday afternoon, and I saw a Town of Callis, and it was a cell number, and I recognized that it was your number, so I answered it. And poor Alfred's at Motor Vehicle standing there with the woman at the counter saying, "Well, I can't register this until I get authorization from a." town official. They wanted to prove that I was unauthorized. And it's probably because of all the stuff that goes on, all the scamming and dishonesty. And so, I mean, I get it on their part, but it's like. Yeah, it was just the first time. First for me, time. Like, so. And I really needed the plate, so. Right, because I want to put the truck like, on the road. I need to do something, so. But it all worked. And they took your word for it? I sent them an email okay. saying that as chair of the Calis Select Board to this crystal somebody. Yeah. And they did it. Thank goodness you were able to connect. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? right. Or he'd have been down there with. Thank God we got that cell phone. Right. <laughs> Came in really handy, didn't yeah, it? It did. It did. It did. It did. Yeah. That's a long time when it's really handy. So is the trucks all? The trucks in service. It's been running for two weeks, three weeks. Uh, we did a few minor things to it, um, just little hiccups. Um, but yeah, it's it's going great. Good. So you run those easy during a breaking period, I guess, right? You know. Yeah. Right. Push it's snow or. Well, we're pushing snow. Yeah. Exactly, but it's, it's. Uh, they told me to run it, same as I would anyone. Oh, really. But it's the it's the break in oil. You got to change the oil sooner. Okay. So it's five thousand miles. So thinner oil or something. Or something or. It's just because the motor's new and they want fresh, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Fresh oil. They don't want as many miles. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, like that. You know, yeah. But as far as running it, they told me to run it. Really? Like I owned it. And it's a Detroit, so that's a strong motor. Yeah. That was a long time. Does it still make that? Because I can hear the truck coming me way before I can see it. It's like I can hear it down at number 10 pond. Oh, this is a different truck. You're probably not hearing it. So line. you probably won't hear it now. The old line really had Yeah, it whistled. Yeah. Yeah, howled. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of nice because I knew it was coming. Yeah, the newer <laughs> Western Stars are very quiet. Yeah. Very quiet. And you Paul's driving them. Wake you up you no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. no, it, makes my, it makes my dogs bark, so. Right, right. Um, Paul? Paul's, is Paul's running that one? Yeah, that's Paul's truck. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's what the, I bet he feels are. special, huh? He is very happy with that. Truck. Good, he is, good. I mean, he beats me to work. <laughs> he actually, I call everybody the same time, and he actually beats me to work. So. <laughs> did you remind him it's not a John Deere? I did. And you like the photo yeah. document yeah. that he's driving. Right <laughs> but he was very hard. happy with it. Very Good. happy with it. Yeah. So what else is going on? I know you guys have worked a ton of overtime. Yeah, yeah, we have. Uh, mud season is... Oh, it's going to be here on a Friday. Corner. It's next starting. Week. Yeah. We're yep, it started last... End of this week. End of last week. Yeah, Saturday there, that sun really... Mm -hmm. spot, soften things up. So yep. We've got a pile of gravel out back. Uh, if it's, hopefully, I can get into it because it's froze and we have, you know, taken and scraped the snow off of it mm -hmm. so the sun will get at it the next few days. And Good. Hopefully, we'll be able to get into it. None of the pits are open, so we're going to rely on that pile until so the pits open. open. When do they open? April? Sometimes they'll open in an emergency if enough towns need it mm -hmm. and the weather calls for it. So. Yeah. Victor's over there to see if they can, if, how soon they can be opening up. 
but usually the other towns around because there's 10 towns that haul out of there so yeah you know somebody will be hauling hollering to them and getting them getting them motivated so so i'm looking at my iphone weather app <clears throat> 40 wednesday 49 thursday yeah. and 53 on friday with a 70 percent chance of rain on Friday, yeah, that's going to be Friday's going to be nasty, and then Saturday, degrees yeah, right. Um, Saturday will be 38 degrees and 50% chance of net frozen mix, so it's going to be yeah. nasty and muddy and ready. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and getting below freezing on I mean, Sunday, there's not a lot we can do with that either, because yeah. especially when you get rain, it's going to soften the soil, yeah, and then it freezes and you get the ruts, and right. it is what it is. Right. But I'm wondering, you know, with the last couple of years, we've had a pretty decent mud season where it wasn't really as, as bad as it can be. Yeah, because there was a lot less snowfall, a lot less rain in the spring, and warm sunny days that, and wind that dried the roads out. So it was just, it's mother nature there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We really need the mm -hmm. slow thaw is what we need. Right. The freezing thaw. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it, it warms up fast, that's when we're going to get the serious Nailed. mud. Yep. Well, it's the middle of March and it's like January. So. I know. Well, that's, yeah. I know. All signs are showing that it's going to warm up fast. And exactly. Right, yeah. and then we'll be like yeah. in soup. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, telecommute. Right there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that's else? Um, okay. Not a lot. I to, I wanted to run something by you guys. Um, the town pickup needs tires, winter tires. And I would like to have two sets of rims, one for summer and one for winter, so mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. it's just easier to flop them over. I have tires of my, uh, rims of my own that I bought for my truck and I'm not going to use them. Steel so, rims? Steel rims. Yeah. And they're not rusty. They like they're brand rust. new. They're oh, never used? They're brand new. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so I would like to sell them to the town if you guys are okay with that. They're, I've got a quote, I think I did get a quote for brand new tire rims, and they are from, uh -huh, from New England Truck Tires, where we buy all our tires. Uh, 190 bucks a piece is what they want. Well, that's just the rims, not the tires. Just the rims, not the tires. Pickup truck rims? Why do they they're, eight, they're 18 inch rims. Each? Yeah. They're not 190 a piece. So that's crazy. Four rims would be yeah. $766. Do you, do you have the do you have the receipt for your own personal purchase? That's a quote. If we were this to buy a new This is a quote for brand new tires. For wheels. For wheels, for wheels. wheels, I'm sorry. For wheels. And what she's asking is, do you have the... I misunderstood what that is. That's not a quote for what... This is a quote for if we were to go to a tire store and buy rims. Right. Okay, I'm that's I'm going to sell you my tires. My rims are a whole lot cheaper than that. Okay. I'm going to be like 130, 140, who I would like out of my rims. So they're brand new. It's just like having mm -hmm. they're identical to those. Yeah. Same you have gauge, <clears throat> same gauge, same size. Mm -hmm. yes. <clears throat> Do you have the receipt from when you purchased the ones that you have? No, I bought them secondhand. So they've never been on the. Oh food. my goodness. They, they're takeoffs. They're they're rims that come off in a truck that mm -hmm. you know they put different tires, different size rims. So you have Ford, that Ford year, those years, uh -huh. um, you can have 17 inch or 18 inch. So the rims that are the the ones that you have the quote on, are those a take off or second hand or whatever you no, call these them? are brand new tires, the, or rims, I'm saying tires. They're uh -huh. brand, these, this quote is for brand new from the factory. The takeoffs meaning that the, the, the purchaser wanted a different size rim, the other option. Correct. So these were new at the dealer, and the dealer swapped out, but the different the size rims were smaller. So, so when they 17s. bought the truck, it came with 17s. The right. guy didn't want to run them, so he took them right. off. Yeah, so I'm understanding. He bought them with the truck, not with a receipt. Right. Right. He put different wheels and tires on right. that new truck, and he had these rims. So oh, he did it. The dealer didn't do it. He did No, I Right. Elfie bought it from somebody who uh, okay. did this so to did a truck that he bought, from what yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. right. so, so, so somebody else bought a truck, didn't want this, the right. wheels right. that were on the truck. Right. They've never been used. They just right. came off a brand new truck. Right. They so, weren't purchased separately. So, John, do you understand what he's saying? Yeah, they're, they're, they're new, new rims, essentially, that they're they're, never, they're they're not seen salt. Right. So the problem with steel rims is they, they, they don't last long, they rot, rot out. And these, these aftermarket press things, mm -hmm. little junk. 
I mean, so that's John, the same room that the truck came with. The but these are the same ones. I can't. I was asking about the gauge because you can get cheaper ones that don't last long. Right, but these came off of Ford. So these are, are the, yeah, these are brand new Ford yeah. factory and that, rims. And, well, I really, I really appreciate you it's huge asking us. Yeah. I mean, right. It's, right. If we were to buy them, it would be seven hundred and sixty-six dollars. I'm going to sell you mine for six hundred, so you're saving one hundred and sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Plus, you're getting five rims instead of four rims because I have five and I don't. Oh. Have you know, so you're actually getting five rims versus the four. That sounds like this quote. Yeah. So as long as uh, you know, you'll write us a, an invo invoice. I'll write an invoice, yeah. 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 Um, and I'm even going to mount them and balance them for you at my shop. No, that's, wow. that's good. <laughs> so how I'm much? throwing that in for you. Okay, so how good. much did you say offer for the ram, five rims, mounting and balancing? How much did you say? Uh, it's $600. 600. That's great. Um, yeah, my, uh, you, you've there, there's enough discount there. I just was going to say, if you were looking to get the equivalent to that, we, we don't pay sales tax, for instance, so we wouldn't. But right. you're already discounting well below the sales no, tax. No, he didn't even have the sales tax yeah. on this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. right, there wouldn't be sales tax. Right, I'm right. Saying. Yeah. That, right. Yeah. I'm saying this quote does not right. include right. sales tax. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Shit. I don't have anything to do with the rims. I, I know the town needs them. That's yeah. why I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. Offering you the deal. Anybody mm -hmm. else have a comment, Sharon? You had a comment? Yeah, I, 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 um, I'm. As a matter of general practice, I don't want to see us doing a lot of a lot of this. Um, I don't think we do. No, I know we don't. I just feel like I want to say that out loud. That that it's it's. I appreciate the quote. I appreciate the the, the discount. I still feel like. We need to be really arm's length so that you know we always can defend the actions we took. I would, I would. I, I mean, this is. Well, that's why I came to you and asked you first. Right. Yeah, and I, 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 I absolutely appreciate that. Right. Absolutely appreciate that. Absolutely appreciate that. Can you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to No, no. I mean, can that, you put something it. in writing? What you're offering the town? How much? They're 18 inch steel those, wheels, steel wheels, five rims, mountain and balance. Can you set? I'll just put a, a, a it'd be an invoice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. It'd be just like this, just except for it'll have my name on it. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'll label it out five rims for okay. six hundred dollars, including that mountain right. and balance. And then we can just hatch that. So that works out to 120 rim as opposed to what were those? 191 plus mounting yeah. and balancing, which is. Right. Right, Ten right. bucks anyway. So that would come through on the orders. Bucks. Just so everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. As long as it's, it's it's all documented, I think, and it's yeah. and there's that much distance in price. I, if it was pretty close, I would probably say no. But right. you have enough but distance, it's, yeah. and, but it's, and it's, it's five like rooms. So that's great. The mounting and balancing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Plus, plus an extra rent. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no. good. So. I wouldn't. I it's wouldn't offer it if it wasn't a good deal. Yeah. 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 My house. So, Mine too. It's just like yeah. Yeah. much less. It's just yeah. easier yeah. to have two sets of rims. So winter oh, and yeah. summer. Oh yeah. My husband right. does the same thing. Yeah. So you have yeah. summer That's tires and winter tires. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you want to put that invoice together and yes. send it through the normal channels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We sh should we should we authorize it specifically here? I don't know that we need to because it's, I mean, it's really no different than if we bought it from. Vermont somebody tire. else off the, you know, right. somebody else was right. offering them. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Some well, other taxpayer, if Doug Lilly had a set of tires and I could use them or rims, it would be right. no different than buying it from him. Right. Except for I'm in charge and that's why I'm coming to you. Right. right. And we appreciate that. that. Right. 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 You, did, you did it the right way. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yes. Anything yeah. else, Alfred? Uh, no, I don't think so. Let's sit down for the grant conversation. Oh, there's a grant conversation? Yep, that's why I'm here. Um, so Alfie and I have identified a project for the structures grant and a location for a class two grant. Just want to make sure you guys are okay with that. Okay, so why don't you start with the structure grant? Yeah, so there's a, a, a culvert on George Road near the intersection of Beacon Brook. It's a six foot culvert, 40 feet long, and it's over about four or five times. Right. 
So <clears throat> I would be applying for a grant to essentially size it correctly and put a new culvert in. So that's going to be a real squash culvert that's all flat and low. Well, because right? it's, yeah, because it's there's not a lot of height on the yeah. differential between the stream and the road. Now remind me, when you do one of these grants, do our guys put it in or do... No, and this yeah, one probably will hire, probably put it out to bid, or we can put it in ourselves. It could go either way, and it has gone either way. Right. Okay, and how much are we asking for? I have no idea. I had to get your approval that, okay. that we could do it, and then I need to then go get a... So <clears throat> this is the location of the grant, uh, location of the culvert, and this is a stream stat that shows the watershed and the data that goes with it, just so we know what we're applying for. There's almost four acres of watershed that goes through that culvert. Wow. So that is that George Road and Pekin. Okay. Yeah. Is it on the George Road where the old Armstrong farm is? Or? Yes, it's on George Road. It's just beyond his driveway into his yard. That it's and it's a stream that runs there constantly. Yeah. Do we have to get any Major. kind of A and R permit for that? We do. We get a stream alteration permit, but that that all has to come with the grant process. Okay. So just so you're aware, I don't want to go through the paperwork if you're not happy. Right. So yeah. That's great. Right. No, I mean if that's something that you have you've identified, that's great. Yeah, we this over talks several times. Yeah. In my time and we may not get the grant. It's just mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm going through the process to apply. It's due April 15th, so starting early with you guys. Right. The other thing is a uh, class two. So this the. The paved part of Moscow Woods where it comes off of Route 14 past the post office. This is the second grant? This is the second grant. Okay, and this is a? Class 2 highway grant. That pavement's already beat up? Oh, it's some. Oh, it's a bad. Wow. Yeah. Where, yeah. where are we going to say this? Yeah. It's where the pavement and? It's the pavement on Moscow Woods yeah. Road past the post office to where it gets to Fellows Road. And essentially, we're going to apply for a grant to resurface it and seal it. Um, we had the crack seal people look at it last year and said it wasn't worth doing it because it was such a mess. Hmm. Mm. So we'll apply for a grant to so, again. So to be clear, it's not between 14. Yeah, all it's from, from, it's from the intersection the entire of 14. distance. Okay, it is. Okay. From four, yeah, the, paid, the okay. whole paved section from the 14 across the Over bridge, bridge. Okay. past the post office. Okay. And I think it also goes up to the right of the post office as well. Does that was Yeah, a little so bit. That and roll. Yeah. So, so it would be that whole section of paving. Mm -hmm. And that would be so. something that a contractor would do. That's all contractor. Yeah. So, no, so, I agree. That's a really bad stretch. Madam Chair, if I might. Yeah. Um, so we, we are um, eva continuing to evaluate the, the, the runoff in that area. we got a real problem, as we all know. And the CVRPC has been assisting right. us with that. And um, I, I guess... In that uh, area um, specifically, John? Yeah, that's yeah. right I know there. That's, that is, that, that's the no, area. I that's know where that, it all... But you are talking about from, that particular yeah. issue. Okay. Yeah. That's the east so um, I'm wondering, is there yeah. any opportunity, yeah. well, two different. questions. Yeah. Yeah, the first one being, is there any opportunity through this grant project to um, include reconfiguration of the drainage to the extent, or is that? Yeah, so we have not, so there's the, there's the top five that they're doing 30% of engineering. We have not seen the engineering yet. So that's on our list of projects for the year uh, is those projects. <clears throat> um, and again, it, we have to look at what the scope of what they suggest is a solution. Well, I don't understand who's they. Um, the stormwater. Okay, so that's right. So, so my question is, um, and, may, and my second part was maybe um, you all could check in with uh, Pam DeAndrea right. at okay. Al and and see if this if we might want to delay this or it doesn't matter or I'd hate to see us make that investment of time effort and including state monies only to have to rip it apart and right so so a class two grant is eighteen months so if we get the grant in this cycle. We have 18 months, so hopefully we will have a solution and buy-in from the private property owners as well, because yeah. that they're That's included in the design yeah. issue. So mm -hmm. essentially, what I would do is apply for the grant. If we get it, we have 18 months to do the surface work. 
I wonder and in that period of time we will hopefully have solved whatever issue we need. And so you'll in your application you'll make note of that just so they don't say, well, you didn't bring this up at the time and you're restricted to if we have to make some design adjustments. Well, we don't want us to be blocked from receiving the grant money because we didn't include yeah. all the information. That they well, I can mention it, but just essentially, I don't think that there's anything in the surface of the paving that will make any difference okay. in can, the stormwater issue. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, you can tell me if this makes any sense or not. To call PM Andrea at CVRPC and let her know that we're applying for this grant and. Because she might either want to say, yeah, and, and here, or this is, ask them to do blah, blah, blah. It might be, yeah. so would we That's like to ask, so it would, would we like to ask Toby to do that and then report back to us on that? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be great. And when does, when do you want me to put these on the agenda to be signed? Uh, Next agenda. Well, we have till April 15th, and I, okay. it, again, I can't, I can't do the application until I get all the paperwork right. and the engineering for the, the Right, so we're meeting on the 25th, and then we're meeting again on the 8th. So you just let me know which yeah. agenda you'd like those on. Well, they're due the 15th, so it would probably be the 8th. Okay. Okay. Good. All right, that's great. Anything else? No. That's all we got. All right. Thank you very much. Um, there was something I was going to ask. I was going to do it well. <coughs> Before you go, Toby. And I'm going to jump down to, um, we're trying to schedule these meetings around town. The 18th is here. We've got to set a date for East Cal's Rec Center and Adamant Co-op. I mean, Adamant Community Center to talk about roads to involve the public in a discussion and education and and all that and i've talked to Stu johnson vermont local roads and asked him to attend so he, either he or one of his counterparts at vermont local roads will attend because i think that might help with the discussion about you know this is not just callous this is mm -hmm. all over the state people are having problems with sand and roads and the weather and so I just I thought maybe that would help facilitate the discussion so he's agreed to come I just we just need to pick other dates so I wanted to make sure that you guys were both going to be around and I'm assuming that we're probably going to look at other Mondays because that's generally when we're available yeah um is Adamant Community Center open this time of year it is yeah because I've been there for other things back in January yeah, they renovated oh. it so yeah. it's better oh. insulated yeah okay so I just wanted to let put those on your radar so you know. So next Monday night it'll be here at seven. And Stu or his I don't know, somebody else that works with him lives in Marshfield. So one of the two of them will attend these three meetings. So and and okay. Um, obviously the graders are ready to rock, right? For a while. You know, when when things season? require there. I know it's still they two got weeks down. Push before we start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the both graders got wings on to push the snow off. Oh, okay. So that. They but they're in, they're in, they're in good shape. Okay. They are. Yeah. Everything's sure functioning. Ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to put that on your horizon, and I'll obviously because it's select board quorum, there'll be a special agenda for each of those meetings, and I'll let you know when they were. And I sent you guys the email that when I contacted Stu about attending I sent you both the email so you know what was going on. Um, so I will have some Monday conflicts and I'll send those to you so that you know that I'm trying to get the hell out of Cal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're here at seven next week, right? Yes. Okay. And the yeah. others are T V D. Yeah, we gotta figure that out. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get, hope everybody gets some rest. Yeah. More snow than night. More? More? Not a lot, though. Not a lot, though. Yeah. But it only takes a half an inch. Right. To get me up at three. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Good night. All right. Thanks for coming, Gus. Sure. Um, thank you so much for doing an excellent job, as you always do, being the moderator, doing school, and us. People said the meeting was boring. 
Well, <laughs> that was all right by my book. That's what I said. <laughs> so it, like that, it. it wasn't that boring. Well, if you have I didn't say it was boring. <laughs> if you have too many boring meetings, people don't show up. Well, so that you, actually is, I think, was part of the sentiment, because it needed to be a little <coughs> more lively. And I thought, oh, and I said this, well. You've got to pay Doug Lilly to show. <clears throat> no, I've got to stop and see what, why. I see a worry when Doug's not there. No. Me too. No. But he's um, busy putting us up. What is going on at his farm? Hay and um, road and tractors and equipment. So, oh yeah, you know, all the weather with the animals and. Um, so I thought it went well. It was well attended, even though it was boring. Um, and we had the folks from California that came. That were doing the, doing they were doing some filming, um, under the direction of Erica Heilman, who does Rumble Strip at. Um, TDR, and they're doing some kind of a documentary. They're gonna let us know when they have the Callis Town Meeting portion done for this documentary. I forgot to ask her, like, what's the name of this documentary, and like, and what's the purpose? I should catch up with her and ask her because it sounds interesting. And they were there for the entire meeting. I don't know if they had lunch, but they were there for the entire meeting. One. Thing that I took away, you know, we made some changes to how we do the budget so that it's more transparent, which I thought was really good. Some people thought that Toby all this time had been volunteering his services. Um, so, it, we, you know, we made some changes. I thought they were good changes, but we knew mm -hmm. what those changes were, but it wasn't clear to people that received the town report. So, <clears throat> I made a note that if we do stuff like that next year, we'd make some budget stuff to have kind of like a thing at the end of the budget that says we did this, we did that, like breaking out the salary for the operations. Maybe manager. a little faster. Yeah, something like or that. Or just keep but the noted. column, the notes column. Yeah. Well, we, had we had it there. We just could have left it in there. Right. Well, oh, that's the question I had is if we did that. Is it going to fit? wise could it fit? And the thought I had is if that was it. a problem, perhaps we could publish a um, living budget on the website that people could peruse and educate themselves about the finer points of the budget mm -hmm. in real time on the, on the website mm -hmm. prior to the meeting. Now, Denise is right, though. It could be, um, it could be turned. You might get landscape it. It could right. landscape it. Set up. And that would be bigger. So I, th I think that I'd like to keep that in mind next for next year. Um, One thing you may want to think about, because most people do not read the whole town report the way a couple people said they did, mm -hmm. um, is just thinking about a narrative that doesn't just say, here's what's different from last year, but here are the changes we've made over the last three years. Because mm -hmm. You know, you, right. you guys meet twice a month and you're thinking about it all the time, but right. for almost everybody else, they're thinking about it once a year, and they may not remember right. yeah. what happened a year ago or yeah. what changed yeah. a Good year point. ago. So you may want to just yeah. think about a brief narrative that says, Good idea. Yep. Here's a bunch of stuff that we've been changing over time. And I did follow up with Candy Smith, who I haven't heard back with, because I did not understand, and I don't think anybody else did, her question that she asked us at town meeting about the highway funds or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I followed up with her. If she doesn't get back to me, I tried. I think she was just confused. And I think that's where she landed in the end is that. Really? That was my takeaway. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't ignore somebody's questions. So I did follow up. Well, I agree she was confused. The best I could come up with, though, just trying to think about it, is that you may or a prior select board may well have said we won't use funds in the reserve without it being voted upon but I think maybe what was actually said was we won't buy a piece of equipment that we haven't presented mm -hmm. to the town for you to authorize us it might have been that kind of yeah I guess I'd have to go back well, and look at know, the minutes and, we and that spoke. may not have even been captured in the minutes yeah. yeah the you know there was that conversation with evolved Yes. At that last, at that particular meeting, and I know yeah. Can, Candy was very involved in that conversation. Right. I know she made, I can't articulate it exactly, but she made a proposal as to how we might want to 
and it didn't have this function. And then the, Paul Hannon and a lot of people got involved and it, it morphed. Mm -hmm. And it may be that what Candy remembers most clearly is what she had articulated, mm -hmm. what she had proposed, mm -hmm. and that kind of is what mm -hmm. still is locked in, but that's not where the conversation ended and what was voted on. And that was at town meeting? At that town meeting, yes, it was yeah, at town meeting. No, 2015 or something. Yeah, whatever have, it was, but I remember her being months. very engaged as in that conversation. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking that might be why, where the, some of the yeah. misunderstanding. Yeah, I just didn't want to ignore her question or her yeah. confusion, oh. so I did follow up to say no. Good enough. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, Gus? Um, sounds like you have a social service committee this year. Yeah, yeah, they volunteered. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was interesting that the person who asked about it did not want to volunteer to be on the committee. But it sounds like we have a, I think that counted five people that had Katie yeah. had in the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was wondering if we could follow up with an email and uh, thank them for volunteering. Mm -hmm and ask them to, you know, tell them we're going to put them on the agenda in pick date, mm -hmm. um, and to organize and convene themselves in collaboration with Sandra ahead of time, so that right now, while it's fresh in our minds, we're kind of laying out the, yeah. the well, accountability. So Katie, we'll put that on the, mm -hmm. my to-do list, right? Mm -hmm. And I can contact those. It was, yeah, I think it was some of the people who have done it before. So. Wilson, Fletcher, Barry, yeah. guys named Barry, I don't know him. Barry Burns. Cornelia, Cornelia and Matt. Yeah. And Matt, yeah. yep. Yeah. And we could I think Wilson is the one that's been on it before. Yes. We could ask Craig. Right. Yeah, Wilson's measure. been on it before. Um, who else did you say? Fletcher, Barry. Yeah, Fletcher's been on it before. That makes sense. Yeah. Cornelia probably never has. No. And Mac. Yeah. So that's five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mac asked about paying taxes in four installments. Yeah, I don't remember that we've talked we, about. I think it's come up, but I don't think we ever agreed. Or monthly, that. even. It becomes I, expensive and difficult. For right. I thought your staff. answer was right. I thought your answer was good. It, it is. It's a, a huge burden to the office staff to pay them in four installments. But he could do that himself. He could. He could prepay. Just send the town money. Right. 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 Yeah, he could do that. But I think he was looking at it to try to make it easier for everybody in town to swallow, but anybody can send in tax payments anytime they want. Yeah. Or pull somebody, you know, right. do an auto, a self-escrow, and you can do that. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the, the notes, that, that was it, Mr. Higgins? Yeah, I don't think I had anything. Oh, that was this. Oh, that was the school. So, so I think the only other thing I noted that there were strong feelings about was just who shows up when you have a fire. Yes. Yes. We knew that. Yeah. That was all, that, but it was good to have it really reinforced. And I thought that that conversation was very respectful. Mm -hmm. People, people actually acknowledging that they care a lot about and they care because this is the town, the one that's close to them and, and fully acknowledging mm -hmm. that if you're closer to the other side of town, you might care about the other one. Right. Well, and I do have an update on the uh, station committee, the Woodbury Fire Department Station Committee that oh, yeah. Yeah. has been, you know, they sent out this email inviting us to attend, but we didn't have a select board meeting in between. So I took it upon myself to go and I asked Barry to go with me because he's very, Lizzie's callous, he's very well spoken very thoughtful um, so I was going to ask later on in the meeting about appointing Rose and myself and Barry to attend those meetings yeah. and report back to the board and I, I can fill you in on um, what happened at that meeting um, I can either do it now or I can do it later what's your what's your pleasure you want to do it while Gus is here Gus is interested yeah, they, um, we met last Thursday night at the Woodbury Fire Station. There are three options, and I thought I was going to bring my notepad from when we did this. Let me just let me see if I left it off. Um, there's three options. Oh, yes, here we are. 
Okay. They received some land from a, across the street to the right of where that old store is. It's going to be torn down. Stores. Right. Um, so they received that land. It was donated. So option one um, was to renovate the existing building to be used as office space and meeting space and take the land that was donated, which has an old rickety, I guess a really house that's in really bad disrepair there and put um, a 5,000 square foot truck building across the street and sell the annex building. The annex building is that one you'll remember where the food shelf is, Woodbury Callis food shelf. Yeah. That was one option. Section, the second option was to renovate the existing house on this donated piece of land um, and use that for office and meeting space and build a 4,000 square foot addition for the trucks onto that location, this the new location. location. And onto sell- the, Onto the annex location? No, to this new lot where this house is in disrepair. Oh, oh, I see. In addition would, to the meet, meeting space, the house that's made. Right. Okay. And, and selling the existing fire station and the annex building. Option three, and this one really seemed to catch everybody's attention. Do you know where Don Mason's building is on yes. 14? Yes. Um, it's for sale. It's 600 square feet. Um, it's already got two bays. How many dollars? Hold on a second. Let me, let me finish. <laughs> okay. Um, it's 1,600 square feet. They would need to add an additional four to 5,000 square feet to, the, to that building. And if you remember back when they did this a couple of years ago or five years ago, when all of a sudden we got this notice that they wanted to build this new fire station and everybody went crazy, um, they were um, looking to have that be, it was going to be like a one or a two million dollar project. They've really come, they've really realized and I think they've heard that towns can't afford this. So they've really lowered their expectations and are much more reasonable in discussing other options. Great. So the Don Mason space is, I think they said it was 130,000. Um, it's like three acres there? Yeah, something like that. That yeah. goes up on the, that little right. back road there. And that Maple, actually, Maple. the location Maple. brings it closer to Callis people. Yeah. And it's high and dry in terms of floodplain issues. Yeah. It's a good property. So that would make it so that some of the folks in Calus who have their fire insurance been canceled because they're too far away from the fire station, that might help a lot of folks in Calus uh, yeah. to be able to get fire insurance less costly than they are right now. So they would build a whole kit and caboodle there? They would And then the, sell the right, then they would Northfield sell, Savings property and their other properties? Right. Yep. And... If you remember when they that whole big thing went on in, in Woodbury, they did a they had a committee that looked at trying to keep the village center active. The store has since been through two or three different um, store owners. It's no longer a store; it's been converted to apartment buildings. Right. So they don't think that there will be as big of an issue like moving it from right in downtown. Waterbury to maybe this Mason building. Woodbury. 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 Is it still in Woodbury? Right. Um, Not in Waterbury. Oh, Waterbury. I'm sorry. <laughs> Woodbury. Woodbury. Um, they don't think it might be as big of an issue to move it from beautiful downtown Woodbury to this Don Mason space. So That may help the town hall. I mean, they're, they're right up tight to the town hall, their right. building. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that's always been an issue, too. So it might be. Right. To my mind, if they even, you know, if the town, if the town hall could utilize that, the town could annex that for some other ministry right. use. Do, do we know what the, do we know for sure? I mean, I'm not saying that this is, this is um, a deal breaker, but do we know for sure that it would help people who have lost their insurance? Do we know specifically what the issue is? The, the issue distance. is the distance from the fire station. Sure, okay, but what, there must be a bright line. Yes, yes, I think it's five miles or something. Is it? It's five is what I recall people saying. Yeah. So it would just be interesting to look at that. Right. Well, I it think that, you know, like I said, this was, more than a mile. This was the first meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to get in 
to more into more depth with some of these things. And then they mentioned this ISO rating, and their rating is an eight. East Montpelier's is a nine. And the way I understood it, because I asked, is you want the number to be lower, not higher. What does the number mean? Um, if you Google ISO, it's um, it's some um, it's almost like a credit bureau. It's some national organization or whatever, and it's they have standards. In right. National standards yeah, in, organization. Yeah. So literally, that's that ISO. It's right. It's not something fire truckish. It has to do with the whole operation of the fire yeah. department, how fast they respond to calls. Yeah. No, it's not NFPA standards. No. That's different. But um, but it, it did mention the re they did mention their response time is very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, there's a lot more work to do, mm -hmm. but we covered quite a bit of stuff at this last meeting. Um, kind of sad that they have some money available to do a title search and maybe get an architect on board, depending on the location. So, anyways, on the 21st, which is the next meeting. Paul Cerruti is supposed to work with the real estate agent, whose name I can't remember now, um, to have the building available for this committee to go in and look at, to see if it's a viable option. Don Mason's building. Yeah. Right. And anyways, so that's where that's at. Surprises. his sons didn't want to keep that building. Or his son. Yeah, I don't know. His son was right here. In yeah, that's right on there. Mike Mason works with my son Brian at the yeah. state. Yeah. So, anyways, that was the meeting last Thursday night, and Barry went with me. Here's the ISO information. That's the rating by insurance companies of the ability of a fire department to combat fires and send, protect homes. Can you send that link to me so I can look at that before the next meeting? Uh, do you yeah, want just this link, Google. or do you want all of the hits I got when I Googled no, ISO for fire departments? No, the easy one. Okay. <laughs> now you penguin it is. So I can at least read that so I have a half an idea of what they're talking about. So anyways, there's a lot more work to do. Um, they're going to do fundraising, right and this is something that they always do is fundraising. Um, what else, what else? So the uh, obviously they're they're consulting with the select board of Woodbury and, mm -hmm. and the loss of yet another enterprise, just being a fire department from downtown Woodbury. That's not a concern. I I know they lost a store. Well, that's what I mentioned. You know the other store is falling in on itself. They're going to turn that into some kind of green uh -huh. space. Yes, green space. It's flooding issues. Right. Um, and then Doug, what was his name? Doug and Ann to live in the house that they got from Northfield Savings. Yeah, um, I don't remember what the name was. Um, I, I, it's sad that that, that little downtown's coming. Well, right, and that's, I mean, this, this is not, a, this is not yeah. a definite. Yeah, this no, I'm just, not saying, I'm not, I'm wondering one, if, that, one of, I, if that's going to be an issue We We kept going, them. we kept doing all this talk, 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 talk. So I said, okay, let's identify yeah. what are the options. Yeah. And this is what we identified for right now. Mm -hmm. Will, will there be pressure just um, if if um, if this materializes or starts to evolve moving one mile or mile plus closer to Calus, which is great for Calus oh, right. and for some with very people. Like 1.3 miles. Yes, but it's a it's a zero sum game because somebody's losing. In Woodbury. Right. Right. So. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's part of probably what that part of the discussion yeah. when we have public, um, you know, right. public informational meetings, we'll have to have those before we can even, once this committee identifies things and gets its ducks in a row, we'll have to have informational meetings with here's the options. Right. Unless they kept some trucks at the Mason garage and some trucks at the other garage. And well, they, and, and, I, have, right, and I brought up the thing that you always go back to, John, with it's too bad long to go. In Callis, we didn't have a substation right. with a fire truck so that either East Montpelier or Woodbury could jump in it. And well, and we'd get, you know, we'd, we'd likely incre in, increase our pool of right. volunteers because right, people I mentioned would that. feel like, you know, we have a personal stake in our little mm -hmm. firehouse. Um, they did ask about, somebody brought up, I can't remember now who, 
when I brought your scenario up, um, that you know, could there be a bay at the town garage to house the fire truck? That land space is tight there. Right? It is a lot of equipment, and we'd have to, you know, you'd have to build an addition, and then you're not still not solving the the problem that they have right now, which is they've got. And you know, I've been in there several times, and it's tight in there. They can't even fit the big trucks in there. You know, so just kind of by way of. Uh, Harrison, it, I grew up on Long Island in this little village that, surrounded by farm fields, is now a sprawl. But the village has retained its kind of original self. And back when the fire station had horses, and they towed the wagon with the water and all that, and then they went to the little ladder trucks. Um, they had individual fire stations for each neighborhood, and they had this conversation, mm -hmm. kind of like a school conversation. Do we get rid of that all inefficiency? And an important argument for keeping them, one of the many, um, other than kind of like the community aesthetic, was that it, it drives volunteerism. That's a volunteer fire department still down there. And having one in your own community, you get quicker response times, people can be there quicker, um, and you, there's a greater level of commitment that you see um, mm -hmm. by the community. And so they maintain them. They got one, they got the main house, and they got two at least three and they have one it's a single bay mm -hmm. uh, fire station it's been there since you know, the 1800s yeah. and um, you know, I, I think I still think it's, it would be smart if we if, if an opportunity for us to build a single bay <coughs> garage mm -hmm. like more in the center of Calus and and maybe there's no truck to put in there now but we're, we're constantly rolling over trucks if they could put it, a pumper in there with a thousand gallons on board, that would be huge. Right. You know, yeah, I mean, you got to identify a location and all that. So, anyways. And then I, I would volunteer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You'd have me. Right. Um, so, anyways, that was sort of most of, you know, it was kind of organizational and people didn't know each other. So, and we're looking to maybe meet once or twice a month, depending on whatever. Yeah. So that's kind of an update, and we can wait till the right time on the agenda to make appointments. So while Gus was here, I wanted him to know what was going on. Well, good luck with that. We Thanks. Like the fire department many, many years ago. And you, those things were. You were in Woodbury, or? I was on the East Mount Fire Department for yeah. about 11 years. About two. There you go. 87. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Bruff was on the Woodbury Fire Department. Yeah. 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 But I, I think. Else. It's been a great deal to contract with the two. I mean, when you come here, what it costs to right. build a building and then mm -hmm. outfit a fire truck, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I have no idea what they go for today, but I right. remember the last time I was involved with a truck replacement, it was a couple hundred thousand dollars. Five to seven hundred now. Yeah. You paid five fifty mm -hmm. for the last one you used. Yeah. Oh. So, so that's kind of the update on that. So I'm sure that'll be a topic for next town meeting. Well, thank you again. Yes, for thank again. you, you guys. For the work thank you so much. Because <laughs> you're so reliable. Yes, you are. Yeah. You've helped us on other projects. Yes, too. you yes, have. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. Here, so. Yeah, Ancient Roads was a lot of fun. Yes. Ancient Roads, yeah, so town halls, you know, farms. And yeah. That's it's all part of it. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Um, okay. Well, that's it. So back to the agenda. This, the NEMRIC proposal. I think Katie put it in the mm -hmm. um, folder. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this at the last meeting with regard to uh, fulfilling the role of auditor, town auditor, not professional auditor, because we need to until we amend the charter, which is another item for next year's town meeting if that's what we decide we want to do. And Cynthia from Nemrick had talked with um, Sandra, and you'll remember this letter from last time, where she said, you know, 
what much you could do. And then we have a little bit more detail and she's looking for it to cost $500 a month. We have budgeted 6000 mm -hmm. So we have enough money to pay for it. I just wanted to see where you folks were at, what you wanted to do with regard to that. Whether we should give Sandra the go ahead to get this get this rolling or not. And this will come to, to us, right? And we'll look at it right. here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And as she said, she'll do spot checks. Um, she'll do journal entry review. And then the regular reconciliation of bank accounts, tax receivable, accounts payable, payroll liabilities. So, and that fulfills our requirement for the town auditor at this point. So does she do that remotely or will she have to be here for that? I think some of it, I think most of it she could do remotely because it's in Emmerich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, I seem to recall something saying that she would come in once in a blue moon, but the bulk of it would be remote. Right. And that her email said that this is a work in progress and she'll take feedback. Right, we can make changes. We may have something right. that we want to, you know, when she starts doing this, we may say, oh, can we see or whatever. So it's open. Do we have to um, put it in a contract terms? I think we need to, um, you know, I mean, she sort of does this. So I think we could take and make a letter mm -hmm. and incorporate this latest right. document into this. We can ask Sandra to help us with drafting a letter. And then you can either authorize me to sign it or we can bring it up next meeting, yeah. whatever you want to do. But it would be nice to get it started yeah. sooner rather than later because we're, we haven't had anybody for a year. I'm okay with, with uh, I'd like to make a motion that we authorize you to work with Sandra and wrap it up. Okay, second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then, as we said, you know, it sounded like there was an opportunity to make changes. Less is more, or more is less, as we as we move along. Okay. Um, town clerk, town hall, Act Forty Six. There's going to be a budget vote on April 9th at yeah. here yeah. for the U32 budget because they didn't put forward a budget as our as we did or as we convinced the school board to do. So now they have to do a special election, and then there's going to be another. There's going to be another special. Yeah, it'll be the uh, it's eight. vote. For the it's on the eighth, isn't it? Of is that, what? Is that the date? Yeah, it was three days after. Vote for the decision. The decision, Judge, right. Yeah. So is that going to be in March? Or you, they have um, to have time to warn it correctly. Warn 30 days. Right? 30 or 40? Is it 40? I don't know. Didn't oh. Oh, Judy send an email saying they wanted to do it on April 8th, which okay. would be the day before. The, the day before we have the vote at the office, and that meeting would be at the school. At the again. school. Would it be at, at U32? Yep. It's the continuation of the meeting we taped yeah. Right, right. The so, eighth is our usual select. I know. Meeting. So we'll have to just forego that meeting or meet a different day. Which um, is when Toby's supposed to come back to us with the grants. Right, well, we'll have to figure that out as we go. But it's going to, I don't want to preclude anybody from going to that meeting by having a select board meeting, so. Yeah, I have CBRPC on the eighth. Okay. Um, all right, we did the debrief on town meeting. Anything else you want to put on the list that, I'm, that Katie's typing into the minutes or on my to-do list? You got the list we were talking about earlier, those three things? Yeah, you got those, right? I, I think I've gotten everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, want to do liquor licenses? Sure. I don't have any liquor We can do liquor licenses. All right, so we have, somebody can open those and pass them around. So moved. <laughs> um, there you go. All right, here we are. 
let's do the liquor licenses first. We do these every year. Um, first one is for the Lamy Bar. And it's the standard language. Artie and Nancy are the um, owners. They've got their beer and beer, wine, and liquor. Check. Well, Whammy Bar is separate from the store. No. Whammy Bar is going to continue to serve hard liquor. Yes. So there's Maple, and there's so then there's Whammy Bar, Maple Corner Store, and Adamant Co-op. So we can either do them all at once and sign them, or we can do them individually. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do. I would move it. You keep them as a slate. Okay, so this is the Adamant Co-op, Liquor Corner Store, and Whammy Bar. And. And to be clear, Adamant Co-op is to sell retail, not dispense. Right. Beer and wine. The Whammy Bar is to dispense. Beer, wine, and what they call it, hard liquor. Right, and their board has signed off on that. And, and the maple corner store is to dispense, I'm sorry, Sell. retail. Sell. Right. Beer and wine, not liquor. All right, does anybody have any questions? Do you want to look at the documents? Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Okay. Aye. All right, I'll send these around for everybody. Okay, so we want to make sure we. Sign it. There's a section to sign approved or disapproved, so we want to make sure we sign it in the approved section. There's me. This is my corner store. Well, this is approved by Board of Control Commissioners. But you, yeah, it says town clerk, okay. So what she, what she does where it says that here? Mm -hmm. We give these back to Judy and she says approved by the town of Callis and she five select board members and that there were five present because it'll show in a minute and then Judy has to sign off. All right, the next thing up is the sheriff's contract. And this is the Washington County Sheriff's. We have to sign twice. And the only change, because I looked at this today, and I had Sandra check to see what the hourly rate was in the last contract, because they say we have, we have needed to raise our rate this year to 29.25 per hour. The mileage rate remains the same at 0.625. There, the current contract, the hourly rate is 28.75 an hour. So this is a 50 cent an hour increase. Um, the contract period is April 1 through March 31. When do we put in the budget? 3,000. So we're still okay with that. Yeah, I mean, we, I guess we have to be because that's all we budgeted for. Um, so we have to sign these renewals. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the sheriff's contract for April 1, 2019 through March 31, 2020? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I will send these around for our signatures. When did they come and meet with us? They haven't in a couple of years because nothing's really changed. If people want them to come and talk with us, we can invite them. I feel like they've been here. Did you have, do you remember the sheriff being here? They don't. They used no? to come every year, didn't they? Yeah, and that was, at one point they were coming because we had a lot of questions about um, Speeding and yeah, you proper, know, proper, proper right. uh, notice of speed ordinances. I feel right. like if they didn't, especially if Cliff, if Cliff hasn't heard them, that means they haven't been here in, in a couple years. years. Right. right. I did, so it hasn't been that long. But I do feel like, you know, we spent 30000 a year on them. We ought to hear from them. Three. 
We get a percentage. Either way, them. they are our law enforcement. Mm -hmm. we, should, yeah. we should meet with them at least once a year. I can ask them to come in because I would have some questions about this new legislation that VLCT sent a thing out to everybody where towns are going to be more responsible for law enforcement. I don't know what that means. But when, yeah, Kate, if you can make a note on the list to do to get the sheriff to come and talk to them. Where do the Chittenden County Initiative downloading on us? Probably. Rural, rural towns. All right, are these the liquor ones? Yeah. Um, because I don't know how we're supposed to pay for more law enforcement or what that even means. Right, so, maybe, so I think that would be a good reason to have them come in. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they'll know the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Let them, let them know. Let them hear about. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, we did look at my six sheriffs. I wanted to bring up um, Jared Thomas. And I had where. Him. Scott Bassage had, has been our alternate, and David Healy is our representative of the Central Vermont ISP board, the Central Vermont Fiber Optic stuff. And um, Scott ran into this guy, Jared Thomas, who lives in Calais, and he's very interested and very knowledgeable about computers and technology and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and Scott suggested that we appoint him as the alternate instead of Scott as the alternate. And the, the reason I'm asking tonight about this is because there's a meeting tomorrow night and David Healy and Scott are both out of town. So Jared would be available. We can't officially appoint him because it's not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But we could do a straw poll and I could let Jeremy Hansen know that we've all agreed that this is who we're going to appoint mm -hmm. and we're going to do it officially on the 25th. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, he is our representative so yeah. that he can vote. and. Discuss and all those things, but so to that end, um, it'd be great to have those folks come in and check back in because mm -hmm. David Healy and Priscilla Jarrett, at very least, um, don't have any official tie to the select board or real direct knowledge on you know kind of the issues that might mm -hmm. be of greater interest in this regard to to town government, and they may be advocating. Something. from their perspective, which may be informed by something else, private mm -hmm. sector or their ability to, you know, run businesses out of their homes, which mm -hmm. we may have, of course, have an overlapping interest, but our interest may be larger than that, broader than that, and I, I thought, I, the reason I was really happy with the David and Scott Bassage team was Scott has understanding of what, what yeah. how we think here and what our needs are, and he, that would inform the conversation. I do worry if there's no kind of town. Well, they are our representatives, language. so they need to. Yeah, they I know. So if they're not checking in right. and running stuff by us, yep. which you know, we, I have no questions. I don't know what's going on, or where their thinking is, or what they're where they're yeah, heading. Yeah, And um, so if they checked in with us periodically, and that that would be good. We we'll want to get them on. The we may want to. They may be heading down a path that we might be in total disagreement with, and we may need to. You know, redirect that. So yeah, so I think that's a good idea. Let's get him to come in, right. and I wanted Jared to come in and meet the board, anyways. But I was going to read you his. And so David Healy could come in mm -hmm. with Jared. Yeah. And then David could update us, which would. Be yeah, good. and he did. David did write a piece for the town report. Mm -hmm. right. So that's a, a yeah. one place to look. But I think it's a good idea to get him in. Yeah. You were going to say something else? Um, I was going to say I. I think that we should meet with them and hear what's going on, but I am thrilled that there's new what that it's a new it's a new person. Mm -hmm. I mean I think that you know, John's point's right that, that Scott is, has a relationship, we all know him and we're comfortable with him and he has he you knows know, a lot of history. Right. On the other hand, um, we we need to think the opposite and and embrace the new well, volunteers yep, wherever absolutely. their interests are and this is for jared right yeah do you for know does anybody know i don't know him? but for him so this, this is an entree to get involved, involved with town yep. town issues so yep. it's awesome. yeah no i thought that's it was right. great that's right 
I already thanked him um, in an email for being willing to step up and do this. But his schedule, my understanding was he wasn't available tonight, so I was going to put him on for the 25th. Yeah. But look, I'll just read you, um, this is a little bit about Jared. Jared grew up on a dairy farm in East Montpelier and graduated from U32. For a number of years afterwards, he traveled, worked in the back country in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, and lived in a number of different places throughout the U.S. In his mid-20s, he came back to Vermont to finish his degree in business at Johnson State and decided to stay in central Vermont to pursue a career as an IT professional. Outside of work, Jared enjoys skiing, snow machining, ice fishing, camping, riding motorcycles, tinkering with electronics and computers. Jaron joined the team of professionals at RB Technologies in 2015 after a long stint as the owner and primary engineer for Crouching Line and Digital. I don't remember that, but he has many years of experience in a wide array of network technologies, including Windows servers, VM, VMware, vSphere, Linux, network security, and much more. Sounds great. So. I think Crouch and Lion. Stuff I don't understand. Me too. <laughs> I think Crouch and Lion, if I'm not mistaken, had a hand in helping Ruben Bennett set up our retech. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, can we do us just a straw poll of appointing Jared so he can go to his meeting tomorrow night and give us? Sounds great. That would be great. And again, uh, I. I want to say that, and I did not know he worked for RV Tech. No. And so we now have two, and this is not a negative, but this is just, we have two individuals that are very much representing a business interest, mm -hmm. and um, that does not necessarily incorporate the municipal interest. It's not, one doesn't displace the other, but. Does um, David so also work for RV Tech? He works for uh, Stone Environmental. He's your GIS guy. Uh, so. He's got a, a supreme interest in being able to upload these massive files mm -hmm. from home. He, right. He's really constrained by the. You know, I, I do, yeah. So. I mean, it makes it really important that we meet with Jared because the issue is going to become conflict of interest. Unless, I mean, and that's me being completely naive about perhaps the two have nothing to do with each other, but mm -hmm. I want to hear him explain to me that it doesn't. That well, I wonder if his employer. That's a stupid right. thing for me to think about. But I think I want to know if his employer knows that he's going to be serving on this board and whether the employer yeah. would have an issue with it. I mean, one is service and one is tech. I mean, one is right, one is internet and one is tech. And I don't know, Cliff, maybe you have some sense of where, if any, any place there's any overlap or conflict there. Well, RB Tech does our. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, right, for right now, because we haven't done an RFP or anything. But, but they don't provide the internet service. So no, the ISP no. is whatever yeah, it is. You get the fiber optic. Right. right. And I, I suspect they're different, but I'd really love to hear somebody tell me they are. Yeah, they're, they're not an ISP provider. They provide services that um, companies, uh, private sector or public sector operations require to keep their networks up and running. Right. And consequently, they understand how to connect to the internet and utilize and interact with it. Um, on the surface, it's certainly not a uh, conflict of interest, but it could bleed over into that when it gets to a point where they're setting uh, standards. Right. And that's okay. what you would have to be careful mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we would want to make sure and you know that first rollout. I mean, these, this thing, if and when it gets started, and then it's fully, it doesn't all happen at once. It's not like they're going to flip the switch. They're going to run as revenues avail themselves. They're going to have to decide, prioritize mm -hmm. where these avenues are going to be laid out, mm -hmm. and these fiber optic avenues, and you know mm -hmm. how that skewed is going to have a very direct effect on one, on some folks. And some businesses over the other, and so I, I worry about. You know, it's just important we, we have a municipal and municipal involvement in this. I think from all five towns, quite frankly. So yeah, um, well, that's what it's supposed to be for, right? We're right. It's a municipal fire district, basically. It's a right. That well, we had David Healy come in at some point last year. I can't remember when it was to give us an update. So I think it's. 
you know, maybe we need to get them to commit to a quarterly update or something so we can have. It must have been June because I was going to say we haven't heard from them really? since. But I missed both June meetings. Well, and I remember you came in at one um, point. Yes, you did. Yeah, because in my mind we haven't heard from them since before last year's town meeting. Wow. So. So I think we could ask them to and bring this this issue up that we have this question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think quarterly is a good idea because yeah. they because it's been almost two years so. Yep. There must be things starting to... Well, and it's taken them, from what I heard, it was very painful when they first started up getting yeah. committees set up and rules and how they're going to do this. So they've had a year mm -hmm. under their belt now. Mm -hmm. But I would also encourage everybody to read David's report and the town report before they come. And I'll mm -hmm. ask them both to come mm -hmm. on the 25th. And maybe Scott even put his mm -hmm. best in the baton a little bit. Yep. So. Okay, so this was not on the agenda. Right. Jared Thomas. Yep. I don't know where in Calais he lives. Does he actually live in Calais? Mm -hmm. oh. Right, because he got represented. Just oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good question. Here, because... they don't. <laughs> right. All right, next up. Um, Cliff, you're up. Yeah, I'm going to your. Oh. Yeah. For how long? And are you available by? Are you available by email? No, I wanted to. Where are you going? Kitty. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> she said okay. you're up. Oh. Um. All right, for IT services. So I wanted to. I'm not ready to finalize this thing. I'm about at this point maybe 85 percent of where I want it to be. What I wanted to do tonight was uh, just briefly show it to everyone here and talk about the larger structure of it, not get down into the fine points or the editing or looking for all the typos or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I just want you to see what I've got going. Um, if it is meeting everyone's expectations, if there is anything in there you think maybe we shouldn't have in there or something that we don't have in there that we should have in there. It is in the folder for tonight's meeting so you can peruse it and read it in detail, but I just wanted to give you a quick peek at it now. The structure is I introduced the project talking about where we are, what we're currently doing, then I go into the purpose of why we're issuing this RFP and what we hope to achieve by doing this, uh, make myself the central point of contact during the RFP process should somebody have questions, want clarification on something. Uh, defining the timeline, which will be revised because some other information has come up um, that I want to pursue before we actually put this thing out and start shopping it around. Uh, requirements for how they can submit, I'm going to ask them to uh, provide an original and a copy um, printed out in an envelope that gets here by whatever the cutoff date is. Uh, the standard of, you know, if you come in after this date, you're not going to be uh, considered necessarily. Uh, then the overview and scope of our existing IT and the scope of services that we expect them to provide. Quite a lengthy list. I'm still working on it. Uh, the option to do on-site visits before they submit their proposal and that that has to be scheduled in advance. Uh, the proposal themselves, when they submitted, what do we want them to include in it? We want them to include a cover letter. We want them to tell us a little bit about their organization their size, number of employees, um, ex years of business expertise, etc. Are we going to ask them for references? I was going to ask them. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's in here. Okay. I didn't see that when I read it. But... Uh, last bullet point under number two there. Oh, okay. Great. Um, then we ask them to tell us about their ability and specifics of how they're going to be able to provide these requested services, how they're going to fulfill this contract. 
and then the specifics of the financial proposal to try and get everybody to give us how they're going to charge us, what they're going to charge us for, and give it to us in a manner so that we can compare apples to apples because everybody wants to do their own spin on it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually toying with the idea of even putting in um, addendum that says fill in the blanks. Right. Yeah. So we do have a worksheet side yeah. by side. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm only 85%. That's a big part of it for me. Uh, the the other uh, part of it is is I want to go over this um, Thursday with office staff similar to what we're doing here, so that they have a chance to make sure that their concerns and needs are being addressed. Uh, ultimately, we'll get the thing to where we do the fine points, work out. Um, the formatting of the document, the typos, cleaning all of that up, and then we put it in front of our lawyer, and then we review it as a board and approve it and start shopping. This is so well thought out. Yeah, you did a great job. It looks wonderful. Um, and finally, the last section I have here is, and this is really where uh, Jim's going to get involved. Um, the general terms and conditions, all of those disclaimers and whatnot that we need to make sure mm -hmm. we're stating. Jim may say some of this is overkill, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. I basically have been working with about 12 different RFPs that I found from around the country that were issued by municipalities with different layers of requirements that they had, larger entities, smaller entities, closer to us. Um, and then try to make it sound cohesive so it's like it's all coming from one source, not mm -hmm. five right. different ways of speaking. <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Yeah. So. Cliff, I went in. Oh, wait, you're not done yet. Uh, That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Go ahead. So I added a comment, but. I this is off my desktop, so okay. it's not going to show okay. you. Okay. So, and I'm not sure if it's saved, you know, or if it just went into. I tried to figure it out, but then I get. Mm -hmm. what, I was gonna, down a rabbit hole and I just what I was going to propose is that I have it in the folder so you can access it and see it, but I'm also going to email you a Word version of it. Use that to make your edits and then send it back to me because then I can cohesively incorporate yeah. them. I didn't make any edit. It was just a one, one issue that um, when we first started doing, uh, when we first started talking about an RFP, I think... I think one of the kind of catalysts was the the downtime and the mm -hmm. and the loss of lack of productivity, loss of productivity. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be sure that we build in some productivity standard expectation, either a state one and ask them to say what percent of the time they need that, or leave it a blank slate for them to tell us what it is. But on the on the and then the second part of that is. Do we want to have a uh, penalty of some sort um, for for downtime or loss of productivity? You mean different? I mean, I saw that Cliff put in a two-hour response time. So you're talking about something in addition to that? Well, or cap or cap response time, and then how long does it take to fix the problem and get you up and running again? Right. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, one is getting a phone call, one, and the yeah, other right. one is can I work? And then, and then having a penalty, having some teeth in it. Okay. John? So, I don't know how much this should be on camera or not to speak generally. Um, sure. We have a current contract mm -hmm. with a vendor uh, for IT services. And I was just thinking about this the other day. Are we going to bump up against uh, a challenge to how much of their work product? is assignable if the contract is awarded to a competitor, i.e. we have some level of ownership. I, this comes up mm, in when you hire, people hire consultants, say, and they do a job for them. Mm -hmm. Say, say uh, making up something, designing the re revitalization of the Cowles Town Hall. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's in the fine print that they, they own certain aspects of that report and that or they own the design or they own the design and can you assign that next door that's some right. violation of something. or amends it without you know 
you making a payment to have the purchase that so that can be reassigned. So I, I just hope that that's not a worry and that's not something that would be used by the current vendor. I'm not saying that that would be, but I, it's a concern of mine that any vendor, um, and it's something that's as detailed as downloading programs, I don't know how much, did, are there programs on our server and our database that were, are unique, that are theirs, that, 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 no. that they've developed, you know, little little debugging things or whatever mm -hmm. that we would lose I or lose access to. So I think that's I can speak to this actually. Um, Good. I have reviewed the existing contract. It uh, will. It is an auto renewal year to year. It auto renews on May first. We will be meeting with a representative from RB Tech with the office staff, Denise and myself. Prior to then, um, I think we've already set a date actually. Yeah, I think it's March 21st. Yeah, I think that's it. And um, it's basically they want to talk to us about, you know, it's like a quality check in meeting, mm -hmm. uh, but the person who's coming will have technical expertise as well. We will explain to them that um, we are going to be doing this RFP. It's not a negative reflection on them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just doing our due diligence because we've right. been under contract with them for a while. And so it's time to just make sure everything's copacetic. Um, we can ask him at that point if there are concerns there for any proprietary systems, be it um, hardware or software that they have in place that they would want us to maintain confidentially confidentiality regarding or if there is um, mind share if you will the intellectual property rights whatever right. you want to call it mm -hmm. um, oh, I see what you mean. as I read the contract basically it's yes they would want to be able we have to inform them 60 days in writing 60 days mm -hmm. in advance of intent to terminate even if the contract rolls over um, we still have that same clause. The only money that we're out is if we pay them at the start of the month for the whole month, and we terminate in the middle of the month, we forfeit the extra money. That's in the existing contract. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we would time it so it would play out properly. They would like the 60 days because one, um, it gives them a chance if there's a problem that they think they can fix and address because we're dissatisfied, they have that opportunity to do that. Two, they would need to come in, get their equipment out of here, wipe out any of their stuff. But keep in mind, most of what they've installed for us is public, okay. you know, it's software. Then we can just go buy it. Yeah. We, yeah. you know, right. it's like they can't come in and say, "Oh, we own all your computers." Right. No, you don't. We we bought them. Right. Some of them we bought so directly. We, own, we, bought through you. we yeah. own the individual licenses. We're not working on. We're not their in addition license. to their existing license. Exactly. Right, no, we have And, and then, I guess the other question, the other piece to my larger question is, um, is there added work effort that's not anticipated under the existing contract with them that would be required by the existing contractor to allow the move from their systems to, the, again, the competitor's systems that if we were to award it to the competitor? And would we see an additional invoice or I think that's in there. surcharge? Is that built yeah. into their it, contract? It's built into the contract, like and yes, there is potential, but it's, you know, it would be an hourly thing, and we would rely upon the new vendor to tell us what do you need. You've had an opportunity to view our system. What do you need mm -hmm. from our old vendor? Mm -hmm. And these guys don't want to burn bridges. Right. They want the opportunity to come back. Right. So right. they also are in a community that everybody talks to everybody. Yeah. So who was that guy that we had come in and he said there was some yeah. kind of um, thing that between IT people that there's that so that there's you know integrity and working together and right because kind of he, uh, Mike was his name um, right. and. Um, just like any profession, there is a certain degree of professional courtesy that it's unwritten that people will extend, and there are those who will buck that. Uh, but when you're in a small state like Vermont, you're not going to survive very long. Mm -hmm. So we have that. 
and we will make a point of talking to this rep from RV about should we be moving away from this contract with you, what would you need to do? And I think that's kind of in your RFP is what, if I remember right, there was something in there. Yeah, there's, there's talking about the handoff and there's right. uh, confidentiality and respecting um, respecting proprietary information. There is not an NDA in place. An NDA? Not disclosure no, no. agreement. And we By who? Them or us? With usually non disclosure agreements would be both parties agree that you're going to have access to certain information. So there's a degree of that, but there is not a specific. In other contracts, you will have a separate non disclosure agreement that's really tight. This is just an agreement that, hey, RB Tech, you're going to have access to some sensitive information. We expect you to keep that secure and private. If we move to a different company. And if we go to a different company, we're going to have that same expectation with them. As to, as to us, and then they're going to have it as to each other. Exactly. Right. Yes. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah, that's what we hope, right? <clears throat> well, thank so, you for all your very good. Questions, awesome. other comments, inputs? Like I say, I'll send this to everybody um, as a Word document so it's easier for you to make edits and then that way I can. Um, Want us to do the track input. changes? Um, yeah, just turn on the track changes or and comments. Um, put yeah. your comments. Uh, feel free if you want to clean up language, feel free. Um, but realize that I may go through and <laughs> say, you know what? That's in here twice. I'm going to take out that whole section, but I think what's in here now is pretty much going to stay. It's other things I may be adding. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cliff. Yeah, you absolutely. That's a you. big lift. Thank you. Okay. Let's see if we can. All right. I don't know if everybody has their calendars handy. Yeah. All right. We need to schedule meetings in East Calais and Avon for the winter robes discussion. Um, we're doing the one here next Monday night. We've got April 1st, which would be a Monday night, and... No fooling. No, no, I was going to say, now April Fool's jokes, right? <laughs> that could be a little hard. Um, oh, I have to give my dogs their heartworm medication on April 1st. I can't do anything on the first time. Well, I'm busy all day. You know, I'm trying to get my first bill. Um, so we have April 1st. April 8th is now spoken for because it's going to be a school board thing. If Toby has something like um, grants that need to be signed, grant paperwork, I think the whole board doesn't have to sign it. It's right. usually me. So you could authorize me to sign the, the grant paperwork, but mm -hmm. I want to... I want Toby to report back to us on his conversation with Pam DeAndrea about East Callis. So we might be able to do that if we were to say, do a meeting on the 15th, start at 6.30 to hear from Toby. Oh no, that's too late. Well, that's too late because the grant applications are due on the 15th. Well, maybe we could, um, well, he's not going to change what's actually in the application. No. He's just going to report back to us how we made out. Well, I think the, the idea was to see if we can coordinate it all with CBRPC about the East Callis Falls erosion piece. So maybe... Why don't we ask him if he can come back in two weeks and report about his conversation? On April 20th, on September 20th, yeah. on March 25th. Yes, on a conversation with him. Yeah. You know, he's got two weeks, but if we let him know right away, that may. Well, we did ask him tonight. So. No, I know, but we say we need you to be ready in two weeks, not in. So, yeah. um, Madam Chair, um, with regard to this special budget vote, you know, the. The, the one at. Because in a way, the Vermont law is we have a separate school board, separate school budget, and from the town. And so here we have a, a special meeting being warned, 
as uh, for the U32 high school vote, budget vote, which could have been accomplished at town meeting day. So now our office with the staff. same set of expenses covering that added vote. Now there's a special effort, which is going to cost money. Is there going to be an invoice given? I don't think the town should be paying for that. An invoice. It's coming. I'm. I'm assuming it's coming out of the supervisor and union's budget. So the staffing okay. of the polls. No. I think the staffing of the polls. I mean. They, yep. And they get it free. Um, we should ask. Well, yeah, we should probably talk to Jim, our attorney, about that. I yeah. think it's inappropriate. You can't say we have separate and distinct budgets, mm -hmm. and separate and distinct boards, um, and then all well, of a sudden there's stuff being reassigned. It's it's significant. The well, I want to find out then, so Katie can effort. make a note. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk to the office staff when we meet on Thursday to find out, you know, if they're going to be putting in extra hours and billing the town for that. That speaks right to your point. Well, and it's so, work effort the town isn't isn't able to get accomplished, you know. During that time, we, we had this in our budget discussions. We have a, they have huge workload, and this mm -hmm. is an ad. It's mm -hmm. yes. never part of our discussion, but it was never. It's not normal. Mm -hmm. um, there was a decision right. of that board to not warrant a budget. Um, yeah. The law was clear, and so now there's an expense as a result of that mm -hmm. misinformed decision. And I don't, you know, I'm I'm opposed to us subsidizing. Now is that vote going to with town oh, taxpayer dollars? Is that budget is that going to definitely go forward, or is there going to is it going to get voted to be shut down again? Well, on so, Monday night, and so, then you've already gone to all this expense of budget. I mean, the, of, the, um, yeah, the uh, how does the laws exist. Work? You know, the existing district. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, this is a high school district. Needs to warrant a budget every year. And it's the advice is and statute. You can do it on a different day, but the intent is that you do it on town meeting day. And right. If it so goes you down, you can then warn subsequent week. meetings. Um, this is not a case even where it was voted down at town meeting. This is a case where they just never Pretty follow through under right. obligations under statute, under Good. wrong headed advice by, by I'm saying, the attorney, who then now is advising the opposite. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to way down yeah, that road. It's, it's, a, it's an ugly road. road. But that but, doesn't um, answer my question. So the question was about, if, so you vote this budget question. through. No, no, my question is. I, I understand the question. Yeah, so we approve a budget for U32 school district, just the high school. That's what we're voting on. And then there's the forced merger of the five no, plus question. one. Okay. My question is, this special election for the, the special thing is on the 9th on the 8th there's another meeting is that likely to shut down the vote we can't know no. we can't know i mean it depends how that vote goes and if they were to vote to you know move forward with the forced merger mm -hmm. the effect of the forced merger will be that the, the merged district budget will that, that would then be worn okay. down the road this the next vote will displace the previously approved budget. And this came up, I was attended part, part of that meeting, and that question was actually asked by a U32 board member. Um, you know, how does that operate? We have a budget already you know, approved for, for the upcoming year for U32, and then we subsequently approve a... Now we no, that's still not even my question. My question is, there's a meeting on the 8th, right. and there's a meeting on the 8th that is gonna be like the one we had back in February, right. which shut down, um, which was to say that we were gonna delay a vote until after the preliminary injunction. Mm -hmm. So my question is, could that happen again on the 8th to shut down the vote on the 9th? No, because- It's totally different. This is, the, this is what's gonna be looked at at the meeting on the 8th. Mm -hmm. um, there is no budget being put right. into place. It's well, but it just says right there, number three, to determine whether to vote on the district's budget and other public questions. Right, they're not putting forth the budget. Future they're future just future saying, future do we, when, once we put a budget out there and warn it, yeah. will we be able to vote on it by Australian ballot or will people have to come into the building and be there to 
to be able to vote. The right? budget vote. And so this is this is for the force merger. Right. So uh, what happens? Like school district. Okay. John's right. We don't know because the merger goes through July first. Whatever budget they warned and gotten approved is what's going to be calling the shots. But if it doesn't go through, U32 still got to have a budget. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and that's what we're voting on on the 9th. On the 9th. Right. On the 8th. Right. Okay. Well, so, I mean, yeah, we so the one that we vote on in the 9th down the road sometime in May or mm -hmm. whenever it is, June even, um, will be, you know, displaced by the newer in time mm -hmm. budget arrived after this new single district. Well, why don't, why don't you call Jim Barlow with your question? I can do that. I will do that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a legitimate yeah. question to ask is who's footing the bill payroll wise for all this extra work and time. I mean, the election volunteers don't, none of us put in for anything, but it's a lot of extra work on the part of Judy and Barbara. Well, there's overtime at, at and, very least. And they're not getting other work done because of that. So I, 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 I mean, my, my suggestion is that they keep, they keep track yeah of the hours that are dedicated to this set, yeah. set of tasks and that we regardless of you know whether we, we can mm -hmm. address this now that we could we may be invoicing the district for that could you because so cliff and i are meeting on thursday with the staff would you have time between now and wednesday evening to call jim and ask him your question so that if we want them to start keeping track yeah of uh, their hours, sure. we can ask them to do that on Thursday. Yeah. Have them keep track either way, though. I think so. Because even if, True. I mean, odds are Jim's going to say there's there's nothing wrong with invoicing them. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. They that can say they seems can say very, not going to pay it. That seems very un, unlikely if there's a specific provision. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't read them. But either way, mm -hmm. we want to know what it costs the town. Yeah. All right, so we'll ask them at staff meeting to keep track. And it's a, <coughs> if at the end of the day this thing just does, isn't worth pursuing um, for whatever set of reasons arise, it's important that at the end of the year when we account for staff work effort and they can add that to their long laundry, laundry list is that, that they always right. put together for us of unanticipated added work right. duties right. Um, right. that will help inform it's our useful. discussion. It's useful. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to keep, to have yeah. them keep track. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Um, all right. So we were talking about scheduling winter road maintenance meetings and we got into this. So we were looking at, we have one on the 18th. Um, we could do one on <coughs> April 1st. Does that work for folks? We can do one at 7 on April 1st. Okay, the 18th is going to be here. Town here. Mm -hmm. August, I mean April. I'm already into August. I think I can do April first. My other thought, though, is that, that you know we we may be fine if we have two or three of us at each one rather than yeah, really than okay. all five of yeah. us adding yeah. a bunch of meetings to our calendars. If we're right. sure that we've got two or three people there, well, if we have a quorum. We need to do a no. I know that. So well, we should do an agenda anyway. So, so you might want to warn it, but but. You know, right. we so, have a lot of meetings, so we can cut ourselves slack and each of us try to get to All right, so here's one, what I can do then. One or two. I can schedule one for April 1st and one for April 15th. And I'll, it's, I think I gotta talk to Rick Barstow and I gotta talk to Scott about using the space. And then I can let you guys know. Rick yeah. Winston. Is it Barstow or Winston? Winston. Winston. Community yeah, Center. Community Center. Community Adam, Community. Adam. Yeah, Adam yeah, Community yeah, Club. Yeah. Yeah. Or Andrea. I guess. Rick Winston? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know Rick Barstow was the one who um, arranged those other meetings, John, that we went to. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll do that. Now, we also have three other meetings we need to schedule. But first off, put on your calendars. The April 11th is our joint meeting with the East Montpelier Fire Department and East Montpelier Select Board. That's at 7. What's the date again? April 11th, which is the second Thursday of April. And I'm wondering, um, and we're not in executive session. That's the one that was really fun last time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you, you remember it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. East Montpelier had 
contacted me with an idea that they had regarding right. the Eastmont Player Fire Department. And I'm wondering to see whether or not Eastmont Player Fire Eastmont Player Select Board could maybe we could do a special meeting with them about their idea. That'd be an executive session. At it's six o'clock just before that meeting. We're trying to go, we're trying to like yeah. Get the most bang for the buck out of an, uh, a meeting. Is that is that the, our best next step though? Because well, they, they've asked us if we've thought about. It. Well, sure, but but if we're going to do that on April 11th, we should think about it as a group because it's been months since we talked about that idea, right. and we had some really useful input from Jim. Jim, mm -hmm. and Do we want Jim to come to a meeting. I think. I think we would want to go into that meeting with a... Well, I was going to invite Jim to join us. On that meeting? Mm -hmm. No, yes, great. But I think we want to go into that meeting well prepared and on the same page and... Yeah. Well, let's see what we can do is I can see if Jim is available on the 25th to come to our meeting. To yeah, that'd be great. Um, and you're getting all this stuff, right, Katie? Mm -hmm. And we um, could go into executive thank session. You. Maybe we could go into executive session for five minutes at the end of this meeting, just to remind ourselves as much as we can. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I can. <clears throat> I can remind you guys what Jim said. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then I thought to capitalize on the 11, maybe we could meet from six to seven with the Eastmont Player Select Board because I think this is, we need to get back to them. And we kind of yep. agreed to table it um, in my conversation with Bruce until after town meeting because everybody was just too crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the other things, the other meetings we need to schedule and we, and we need to do this one quickly too, is to meet with the school board and Jim mm -hmm. and get those documents done and those documents are going to require and the staff the staff is going to shoot me um, they're talking about doing it by ballot or by a special town meeting vote or something mm -hmm. yeah so I, I think it would be easier to do it probably not on a ballot but at a voice vote because it's yeah. not a budget item right. and that, might, that would be less work for the office staff, I think. I, I, thought, I assume that's how we were right. going to conduct it. So, so we, we need, need to, to, we need to <coughs> Right, we need, and we may be able to piggyback it on a night the school board is meeting, the Cal school board is meeting. So, and I didn't want to pursue this until I talked to you guys. Um, I can work with Susanna mm -hmm. Culver, mm -hmm. and I think it's Susanna and probably Dot to get this scheduling onto their agenda and I don't know when, we, well, when we have do to they meet, meet generally what's their schedule it's a Thursday night they meet now does this require so it's sort of like a special town meeting is that right am I thinking right yeah it's a town meeting so we have to give enough notice right like mm -hmm. 30 days whatever the requirements are okay so I just want to make sure that I'm right. thinking because we were right. encouraging them they had time when we met to warn it if mm -hmm. they did it right away for town meeting but they didn't but they didn't, right, but it was that chunk of time. There was that chunk of time that we yeah. didn't have. Okay. okay. So this isn't going to be, it's probably going to be in April, but later in April. Mm -hmm. If it's 30 days, we're April, right. yeah. we're already April 11th. Right. Okay, so I'll work with Susanna school? and Dot. Uh, no. They're not on here. They won't be in here. You'd have to They're beyond the supervisory. Oh, oh. So you'd have to go to Central, Super, um, Washington and Central Supervisory Union's website to find out when they're meeting. All right, the next one that we have to do is we need to have a joint meeting with the Cemetery Commission. <clears throat> they generally meet on Wednesday nights. Um, I have two Wednesday nights a month. They're already spoken for by other boards going on. Um, and I don't see this as something that we need to do as quickly as we might need to do the school board meeting. But the cemetery commission meeting is easier to schedule because we don't have to do like a 30 day right. notice. So mm -hmm. I can work with John Samanskis to come up with some dates. Well on there it said the 24th of April. The next one's scheduled for April 24th. Their next one? Yep. There's not one in March? Nope. 
So what? Where do they meet? Do they meet? They meet here. What's the subject of the medium? Top of the hill. Oh, right. So what day? What Thursday is that? Wednesday, the, April twenty fourth. Wednesday, April twenty fourth. Is that the? It's the, the fourth. fourth. Yeah, Wednesday. I have a health center board meeting that night, but I can miss one if I have to. I never miss them, so. Well, or can we ask? I mean, somebody's going to have to go off cycle. Can we ask them to join us Monday night? And then, is it possible that uh, twenty, whenever the twenty-two days in April, twenty-two, um, right? Um, and then, is it possible for us to like have our meeting and then have their meeting in there or something? So no, we've done that before. We did that once before. <coughs> and then, then nobody has to go out two nights, especially with all these meetings are piling up. Okay. Well, we we can be at school. Yes, we can. We can use the school. There's plenty yeah. of room there. Right. Um, I think it's good to use the school. Or the opposite. Possible. If they can't do that, can we flip our meeting to Wednesday that week? Have our meeting and then. Mm -hmm. and well, I'm, let me let me work with John's and Nancy to see if they could accommodate us on a Monday night because we can do from six to seven. Mm -hmm. As it provided that it isn't a work day for Rose. Yeah. Well, the twenty second on a Monday, yeah, that that's a work night. Yeah, that's, um, I so mean, six is tight for me. If, but you've got three. You're right. All right. Okay, so I'll work on that. Um, could I get an appoint an, a motion to appoint Rose and I to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department Station Committee and Barry Bernstein? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I asked, because um, Rose may have a meeting that she can't come, or I may have a meeting I can't go. I think it's really good to have two of us. Yeah. Um, so there's that. What else was I going to say? We want to go into executive session, correct? Yeah. Okay. And next meeting, I'd like to get the town meeting minutes that Katie had done like the next oh, day. I read them. They're really great. Yeah, thank you. And we have some other minutes to approve too, but mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to figure out which ones we need to do and which ones we didn't. Mm -hmm. But if people could, folks could read the town meeting ones mm -hmm. so we can get them done next meeting. Mm -hmm. They're up, they're up, so they're, we've met mm -hmm. our requirement, but mm -hmm. we'd like to approve them. Mm -hmm. um, warrants, are, everybody sign the warrants. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I'm just trying to think if I had anything else I was doing to update anybody on. I think, I think that's kind of it. So I make a motion that we go into executive session for the purpose of for the purpose of discussing um, nine ten mm -hmm. um, real estate matters, real estate matters, and personnel matters. And to, can we plug in the appropriate statutory provisions later. Yeah, you can find them on a previous agenda. I didn't mm -hmm. yeah. put it out. I ran out. Try to keep the agenda to one page. <laughs> yeah. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.